Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. For today's card, I am using a very much oldie but goodie stamp set. This is the Meow You Doin set by Lawn Fawn that I got. I bought this years ago. I honestly don't know how many years old it is at this point. Three, four years ago, something like that. Um, I'm honestly not even 100% sure it's still available. I do have a link to it. That's Simon Says Down, but it's just, I think it's currently out of stock. But anywho, I needed to make a birthday card. My oldest just turned 18 recently, which I still haven't come to terms with. But anywho, <laughs> she has a cat that she loves that the rest of us tolerate. And uh, this set was perfect. I got this set kind of with that rough idea in mind, like way back in the day, anything cat themed. Um, and also because this lawn fawn, it's cute. You guys know, I just, I collect lawn fawn and have for years. So I stamped a couple of the cat images from the set along with, you know, the balls of string and the party hats and the mice and whatnot onto some Nina classic crest solar white 80 pound cardstock with Simon's intense black ink. And then to color in the cats, I am basically just using a dotting motion. Her cat is a tortoise shell cat with, you know, all the different, you know, black and gray and kind of a orangey color and a beigey color. And then she's got this little white patch on her stomach. So I'm somewhat, you know, mimicking the colors of the cat within reason. Because <laughs> tortoise shells are not easy to color. But doing a little dotting image like this, it works. You know, I'm not blending. I'm not trying to blend. I don't want the blend. I just want, you know, all these little colors, kind of the little stripey areas and whatnot. So I had off camera, I had my phone and I, you know, a couple pictures of the cat to look at just to sort of get it as close. But the body, I wasn't too, too concerned about. It's her, mostly her face because my kid's cat has that like kind of line down the center and one half is more black and then the other half is the more like orangey beige mottled look she's a very for being such a grouchy cat because she really is a grouch um she's very pretty <laughs> so i colored both these cats are supposed to be her because one's going to go on the outside of the card one's on the inside so i just kind of worked my way and i had started with that sort of orangey color and then the beige and then i did warm grays to deepen it up a bit kind of working my way from like lightest to darkest with this because um the nearly black shades of the warm grays that I was using can like overwhelm everything. So after I've got everything kind of, you know, I'm just happy with it. I took my lighter pinks or I went back in with the orange and the beige just to kind of push the darker colors out a little bit more and just make those, you know, little splotchy areas sort of show up. And then I'll go in and add, I'm going to add just the littlest bit of pink to the insides of the ears. And I'm going to use the same pink. This is just R22, one of my favorites. So I'm going to use that as sort of one of my main colors as well. So the little cat bed and the tuna. And then in the end, I actually do the party hats and the little yarn balls in the same color combo. So it's just R22, R21, and R20. So keeping it simple. Plus, there, I don't know, this combo, this like shade of pink with these three Copic colors just makes me happy. I don't know. I really like this color. So went in and did that and then decided I would make the yarn balls this color as well. And then use just cool grays for the little tuna fish tin and for these little mice. So just C4 and then I use C2 and then I think I use C0. I'll show it in a second to color these in. Just really quick and simple. Yeah, C0. And then I used a couple of blue greens for the little fish on that little tuna tin, as well as for the um, candle. So BG19 and then BG13. And then just a couple of yellows for that tiny little flame. So once I had everything colored, I went in with my colorless blender, the zero, and fixed up, you know, a couple areas that went out, used it on the little part of that the one cat that's going to go on the inside, I used it on like the little tummy area where the actual cat has a little white area. And then I went in with a color splinter and just did more dotting motions just to kind of lighten little areas here and there to give, again, that mottled look. And then once I had that, I took my Jelly Roll 10, 
white gel pen. Added all my little random highlights. No rhyme or reason, as per usual. With the cat, I didn't add highlights. I just like, went in and did little dots. Little dots to give, you know, just that little bits of definition. And then everything else added just little random highlights. And I say no rhyme or reason because I'm not following any sort of guidelines for like light sources, anything like that. I just add white lines wherever I think it's going to look okay. So after I'm done all my coloring, I use the coordinating wafer die set and I'm just taping all the wafer dies into place with washi tape. And I'll have to do this a couple times because I've double stamped, you know, the yarn balls and the party hats and whatnot. And then for the numbers, because I like to customize cards, especially when it's for my kids and stuff like that. I'm using the CZ Design Everett numbers and I wanted them the same pink as everything else. So I just used those same three Copic markers and just scrolled it onto the cardstock there. So I've got kind of an ombre effect going. And I'm just going to die cut those numbers from the cardstock along with all the little images. And then after I've die cut everything, I just grabbed a scrap of black cardstock and I used my anti-static powder tool. And then I stamped the little um, like fish bones image onto the cardstock with clear embossing ink and then I embossed them with uh, detail white embossing powder. I just thought those would kind of look kind of cute rather than just stamping them on the white cardstock. So die cut those with the coordinating wafer die as well. And then for my sort of main sentiment, I die cut a scrap of this like aqua cardstock with one of the foldable banner dies from Lawn Fawn. And then I put the banner, like the die cut, back into the opening. And I just use the back of the plastic packaging that the stamps come on just to give something for the stamp to stick to because I needed to bend it just so to fit onto because that banner is slightly curved. This stamp was just, it just didn't look right stamping it straight. So I fiddled for a bit, used that packaging to kind of make the stamp sort of stick to it. Kind of went back and forth between that and the lid until I got it curved just enough so it would fit on there. And then once I was happy with it, I stamped that onto that little banner with that same just intense black ink. And then I took those same blue um, Copic markers that I used earlier. And I just used those to kind of add like depth and definition to the edges of the banner. And always, if you're coloring on like color cardstock or craft, Nina Desert Storm, that sort of thing, with Copic markers, always remember that they are going to look very different when they actually dry. Like everything looks darker on color cardstock, but it's because the markers are wet. And like, it's just, it's a completely different look than you would achieve on white. So that's why I use my heat tool and like quickly dried everything just to see once it looked, how it looked when it was fully dry. And I was happy with it. So then I just um, folded back those edges that are scored into that little die cut banner and just tape them down with craft tacky glue. You could make it extra dimensional and add a little like little tiny piece of foam tape in there or something, but I wasn't going to bother. So I did all that. And then I adhered my little elements, like the little string to the ball of string, the little party hats to the cats. So I got those all adhered and then I can start um, assembling everything. So I'm going to put the one little cat in that little cat bed. And then I have my card front, which is just some heavyweight white cardstock. And then I'm kind of figuring out how I'm going to, you know, assemble everything. So I decided to pop everything up with foam tape, especially when I'm like personally giving, you know, handing over a card or personally giving a card. Dimension, I go like all out with the dimension and popping up and all that kind of stuff because you don't have to worry about mailing it. <laughs> So, although if I was to mail any cards with dimension, like using like a rigid mailer, like those um, chipboard style, like mailers or a bubble envelope, adding an extra piece of cardstock in to protect, you know, the dimension of the card, that always, that all those things work too. So I assembled everything. I adhered those numbers to kind of make it look like the cat's tossing those up, almost like juggling that in the one of the balls of yarn, just because I thought it'd be cute. So popped everything onto the card front with the dimensionals and then just kind of built a little scene with the banner and the cat and all the other little elements. And then a few of them I held back, that second cat, etc. that I'm going to, of course, put on the inside. And then some of the little elements I'm also going to do here with just craft tacky glue, like the little mouse and all those little, little fish. So just kind of tucking them in here and there um, behind the banner and behind the little tuna tin with the candle on it. So once I've got that adhered, I of course also wanted to add some bling. 
could not have bling. I'm not going to add splatter to this. This one definitely just benefited from kind of the more clean and simple sort of a look, but I'm going to add some bling. And I, I cut it back though. I <laughs> added so much on here and then like removed several because it was just getting ridiculous, but picked out some bling from Little Things by Lucy's Cards and colors that kind of went with um, these cards. So like a couple of the pool colors and then like a pink shade of crystals. So I'm going to just adhere those into place with dabs of the craft tacky glue. And then my card base is a pink cardstock that I cut in half. So it's going to be a top folding A2 sized card. So I scored that with my Teflon bone folder, creased that fold really well. And then on the inside of the card, I'm going to stamp more sentiments from the Meow You Doin' stamp set. You guys, again, if you watch my videos, you guys know I love puns. It's another reason why I love, love Lawn Fawn. There's so many punny sentiments, punny sets, all that kind of thing. They're right up my alley. So I pulled out the sentiments I want and built the first one. And then I'm going to add the second one, make sure everything's straight. And then I can ink those up with that um, intense black ink and stamp that onto the inside of the card. So it says, I love Mew. <laughs> <laughs> wishing you a possum day. So got those stamped and then I can adhere my little elements. So I've got the cat with the party hat and one of the balls of string and another little um, mouse and fish there. So I can adhere all of those. And then once I get those kind of clustered around the sentiment and then I'll adhere the cat at the end here. I also decided to add, there's a couple little tiny heart stamps in this set. And I just took the little outline heart and I'm just going to ink it up with Festive Berries Distress Oxide Ink and just kind of stamp that kind of fluttering up from the little kitty cat. So once I got those stamped, the inside of the card is complete. The card front I'm going to adhere with foam tape. To, again, dimension. Pop that up from the card base a little bit. And once that is adhered, this card is complete. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and for subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I very much appreciate taking the time out of your day to watch my videos and I love the engagement, all of it. Every little bit helps. Um, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list, a link to everything I use. So you can check that out below in the description box if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.